If we will bring the uh, Benefits and Insurance Committee to order, you'll call the roll, please. Thank you. Commissioner Boyd. Here. Amber Brown. Here. Suzette Couples. Here. Mike Curtis. Holly Deering. Here. Brian Gaither. Here. Mary Hickerson. Here. Lois Miller. Commissioner McAdoo. Commissioner Phillips. Michael Smith. Steve Spence. Sonia Stevenson. Here. Eric Tito Benny. Here. We have a quorum? We have a quorum. That's good. Um, Madam Vice Chair, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes of the previous meeting? Yes, sir, I have, and motion to approve the minutes as presented. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Chairman Phillips. All those in favor of the approving the minutes say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. The minutes stand approved. Thank you. Do we have anybody for public comments? Thank you, Susan. We'll go to item four, Mr. Elam. We're talking about financials. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Carr. So for the month of April um, 2024, your revenue, $1,775,113. $1, Expenditures, $2,364,390. Revenue less expenditures, a negative $589,277. Your total for the calendar year, revenue $7,483,053. Expenditures, $6,991,605. Revenue less expenditures, a positive $491,448. And for your total for the fiscal year, your revenue is $18,803,981. Your expenditures is $18,330,244. Revenue less expenditures, a positive $473,737. For the 266 fund, for the month of April, in the fiscal year 23-24, you have workers' comp, $257.16, OJI, $69,803.32, workers' comp and OJI combined for the month, $70,060.48, and your year-to-date totals, workers' comp, $6,967.31, OJI, $565,922.44, and your total for the uh, fiscal year is $572,889.75. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Elam. Uh, Ms. Thompson, let the record reflect that Mr. Curtis and Mr. Smith have uh, joined the committee. Um, we now, if there's any questions on the report, we will entertain a motion. We have a motion to accept the financial report from Mr. Adam. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Mr. Gaither. Any additional questions for Mr. Adam on the report? Seeing none, without objection, call the roll, please. Commissioner Boyd? Yes. Amber Brown? Yes. Suzette Couples? Mike Curtis? Yes. Holly Deering? Yes. Brian Gaither? Yes. Mary Hickerson? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Yes. Michael Smith? Yes. Sonia Stevenson? Yes. Eric Tuto Benny? Yes. Thank you, Susan. Um, number five, um, Ms. Thompson, the OSHA report, please, ma'am. Yes, sir. This is for the month of April 2024. We had a total incidences of 27. That brings our year-to-date total to 87. With uh, Out of that 87, there's 65 OSHA recordable with 15 lost day claims, 43 restricted day claims, and seven other recordables. On the next page, you'll see this year to date eight, at 87 compared to last year at 89 and 2022 at 54. The next page is the incurred dollars for 2024. We're at 556,000. 2023, we're at 325,000. In 2022, we were at 192,000. 
And on the last page, you'll see the breakdown of the 27 claims with 19 being at Board of Ed, eight it being at County General. Of those, two were at the Fire Department and six were at Sheriff, and that concludes my report. Uh, thank you, Ms. Thompson. I do have a question. Just yes, sir. to go back to the report, you're talking about 27 for the month of April that were reported, correct? Yes, sir. And that is for a total for year to date of 87, is that correct? So that seems like we're just a little bit higher in April on a running average than we were the previous three months. Do we have, is, can you tell me if there's, if that kind of thing is seasonal or is that just an, an aberration for the month of April? It's a typical for the month of April. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's why I asked. Yes, sir. Also let the re record reflect that uh, Chairman McAdoo has joined the committee. Are there any questions for Ms. Thompson regarding the OSHA report? Yes, Mary, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, Susan, it looks like, and I know this 556,000, that is booked, not spent. Um, but, and I know you can't get into a whole lot of it, but is there one or two that stood out and, or, or, and have we done something to possibly allow that not to happen again or to the severity of something that happened or is this just April in general and the price of everything has gone up since April of last year? So there are a couple of things with that. Um, if you recall, we uh, changed TPAs July 1st of last year, and they have a different, completely different methodology for figuring, figuring incurred dollars on claims. So if you figured it based off the former TPA's methodology, our incurred dollars year to date would be at 348,000. Um, but with that as well, there were two employees in April that did require surgery, and that's about 110,000 of that total as well. Okay, thank you, I'd forgot about that, but but like you said, these are incurred, not actually spent yet. Correct. Thank you. Any additional questions for Ms. Thompson on the OSHA report? Ms. Thompson, Mr. Spence has joined the committee. Yes, sir. So please let the minutes reflect that. <laughs> You're not the only one, Mr. Spence. <laughs> You're bringing, are you blaming Brian? <laughs> Outst outstanding. Um, if there is no objection, um, I, the chair will entertain a motion for the OSHA report. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. All, we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, if there is no objection, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The report is adopted. Number six on our agenda is the wellness update. Molly. Take it away, Ms. Howell. Through the month of April, we had a total of 1681 uh, wellness points accumulated by employees. There are 315 employees who have earned all three of their wellness points toward the wellness credit for next year. And that concludes the report. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Howell? Being on, none, none will, and without objection, we'll go to item seven. Yeah, uh, one. Mary. Miss Mary Hickerson has a question, so. Actually, it's more or less, it is a question. Do we have something between now and um, the end of September um, uh, to send out to our people as reminders and everything? Because uh, just the other day I heard some um, mummering in the uh, office that uh, the thought was, well, they got rid of the clinics. I thought they'd do away with the points. So if you don't have anything in the makings, can we work on trying to get out um, information to remind everybody that these points really still exist with or without the clinic? And um, uh, we need something like that because we do stuffings in our, um, we actually still get a pay stub. So if there's something that we can stuff to remind our guys, and I know you send out emails, and but we just need to make it aware that yes, the clinics are gone, but the points still do count. So if we can kind of put that in your mind to uh, get some information together to keep this at the forefront of everybody's mind because uh, that's extra mo potential extra money coming out of an employee's check that, you know, you make assumptions and you shouldn't, but, um, but I think we need to keep it in, in front of everybody if we can. Mr. Chairman, there was a mail out that went out, uh, I think it was about two weeks ago, 
and it was mailed. It wasn't an email. It was actually mailed to their homes. It was a Cigna uh, trifold, I think, that went out <coughs> to everybody about no. about two weeks ago. I didn't get that. I know I got one. Excuse yeah. me, Mary, if you're going to address the director, if you would use your <laughs> microphone. Thank sorry, you. Sorry about that. I didn't receive that, and generally I get those, and I'll speak. Miss Sonia said she didn't get hers. Whatever it is, could we get a snapshot of it yep. so that I can copy it and do some stuff in? Because generally I get them. So that way we'll make sure at least at least my guys get well, it. Well, that's good to know because what we'll do is go back to look at the mailing list to see if uh, the correct mailing list was, was pulled for that. Because I know a couple of others in my office got it too, but I haven't checked with everybody. Yeah, Tony, you're recognized. It might be, and I'm not trying to um, discount our postal service, but some people didn't get my son's graduation invitation and still. And so that was done like two months ago. So it may be that they were mailed, but they're still not delivered. So I, I guess I wouldn't want you to spend a lot of time on your mailing list. Well, well <laughs> yes, I, but I would like to see the mailing list because then I can say it wasn't our mailing list that it should be, you know, somewhere. But if it's bulk rate, is it sitting on a dock somewhere so we don't have to reproduce it again? Any other questions for Mr. Elam. Could I, could I make another comment about you may. the wellness? You can make as many comments as you like. You're going to regret that. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things I regret, Mr. Elam. That's, that right now is the least of my worries. So today, um, in, in, in looking at an OJI panel, um, we visited, uh, and I'm not going to pr promote them, but I, we visited a clinic, a uh, newly opened clinic uh, on the south side of town. Uh, Physicians Medical has closed, and they were on our panel of physicians. So we're looking for, we were looking for someone else that we could uh, add to that panel. So Susan, Jane Corbin, and I uh, toured that this morning. Um, but I also thought about the points because there was nobody in the lobby on the one that we visited and the one right across the street. They both have just opened, I think, what did they say, March? I think, mid-March on South Church Street. So they're right across the street from each other. So um, those people that are having problems getting their points or something like that, you, you just might look at the ones that have opened recently and they might be able to get in and get their physicals done and stuff like that. Uh, I know both of these clinics from the looks of it, I just toured one of them, but I think both of these clinics would love to have the business and, and that is available because I do know, uh, depending on how you do it, it's trying to get in and get those points. So if you call one place, like, well, we're booked for three months. Um, but um, this might be an opportunity for those people on South Church. If you go to the area. Hmm? Ms. Stevenson, can you use your mic, please? You, there's what, a issue, there's an issue the, on this side of the room. What's the name <laughs> of the, the clinic? The clinic that we toured was Ascension St. Thomas. Gotcha. Okay. And then across the street is Gateway Clinic. Right Thank there, you. Right there where the Aldi parking lot is. And they're, like I said, they're both practically brand new. I think, I know one opened in March. The chair may be out of order, but the chair wants to make sure that Ms. Stevenson and Ms. Hickerson are, have asked, exhausted all their questions in this regard before we move on. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, any, other, any other questions for Ms. Howell on the wellness update? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Elam, you want to give us the Medicare Advantage rate pl plan for 2025? Yes, sir. So at the time that uh, this committee met, uh, the uh, wellness rates had not come to us to review and all that. So, uh, and, and also I discussed with Michael uh, to, for the budgeting purposes is to be able to move on. Uh, the rate that we got was a 27.5% increase. And so the first thing you hear is, you know, it really jumps out at you but after we spent some time and we took we looked at it it's still a, a, a large number don't get me wrong 
But when we looked at it and we compared it to the 22 rates and what 2023 20, and 24 rates were, and then what 25 rates are going to be, I'll give you a couple of examples. Like in the grandfather plan, retiree only. In 22, they were paying $151.50. In 23-24, when we went to the Medicare Advantage plan, it dropped to $51.19. And it, there was not an increase in 24, so that was the same rate. For, that's for the employees portion. And then in 25, it will be going up to $65.25. And that's a $14.06 increase. Now that's on your retiree only. But if you look over at something like retiree family, uh, grandfathered in uh, 22, they were paying $621.20. Uh, when we went to the Medicare Advantage plan, it dropped down to, their portion dropped down to $209.89, uh, which is a decrease of $400. And then it is going up this time, the 27.5% is uh, their new rate's going to be $267, or their portion's going to be $267.55, which is a $57.66 increase. So it's when you look at the 27.5% increase, I don't, I don't like that large of an increase, but when you look at where we were in 2022 and where we are now, and no rate increase last year, you're still sa your savings per month is still substantial than what it was 2022. So I just that was for informational purposes because the commission, uh, uh, it, since it came in after the committee, the uh, we ran it through the commission with all the other medical rates, and so that's for uh, the insurance. For that is for informational purposes since it's been voted on by the commission. And I appreciate that, Ed, and I'm sure the committee does too. But I want to make sure that if the committee, this committee, has questions for you in this regard, we give an opportunity to uh, ask those or make a statement. Chairman Phillips, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ed, c could you briefly, without getting into some long explanation, explain the difference between uh, Medicare Advantage and whatever a Medicare supplemental plan is. What, what's the main difference? So in 2022, we were uh, self-insured and we looked into a way that we possibly could save money. Uh, with the self-insured plan, you have Part A and, and Part B and Part D with the pharmacy. Uh, and we found, uh, after looking around, we found that you know the Medicare Advantage, Cigna Medicare Advantage plan, would be a, a very good cost savings not only to the employee but the portion that the county pays also. So then the Medicare Advantage, we went to it, which is is it combines all of those together to be Part C uh, with uh, pharmacy. Uh, since Cigna has come to us and said that they are uh, divesting this, then um, you know we'll have to look at, since it's under the Cigna umbrella, we'll have to look at bidding this out for uh, to be effective 1-1 of 2026. So we'll take another look at it and see um, you know what's out there. We'll bring bids back to this committee. I don't have a time frame set up, but I would roughly say it would be in the early part of 2025 with those bids effective 2026. From a medical perspective, what's the difference between a supplemental plan, grandfather plan, and uh, a Medicare Advantage plan? Medicare Advantage, from what I understand, is a kind of a, a, a group coverage. You have certain doctors you can go to, that kind of thing. Is that the main difference? Well, you you do have, your providers are mostly the same. We didn't run into, when we looked at the fully ins, uh, this fully insured plan with Cigna and the self-insured plan that the county had, they're, they're, most all of the providers were the same. Uh, it's just that the claims all run through Cigna. They don't run through Medicare. Uh, Cigna kind of bundles that and handles that themselves instead of, of it um, running everything through Medicare. Uh, you run everything through your Cigna Advantage plan. 
and, and our benefits were almost identical. Mm-hmm. If that's, I mean, if you ask about benefits too, the benefits were almost identical. I'm not gonna open up a can of worms, I hope, um, but why not just let the retiree get his own supplemental plan, his own advantage plan? Why, are we, why do we continue uh, to do that for them? Well, this particular plan is the one that, that is Rutherford County specific to what they've had in the past and what they've paid for. Uh, I mean, there is that option, you know, Commissioner Phillips, if, if that's what's the uh, will of the committee. Um, and, uh, you know, as you get into the later buckets, you know, you just get a supplement. Uh, you, don't, you don't even get th- what the grandfather, non-grandfather plans get. Um, so, you know, that is an option. Um, but this particular plan that we have with Cigna, it mirrored the plan, that the fully insured plan, and we've got, you know, pretty much the same benefits. I would say your average, and again, I haven't done a lot of research on this uh, recently, but I'd say your average Medicare plan that you see on TV is not as rich as what the county's plan is. I see Mr. Tutu Benny back there. It just continues to be a benefit for our retirees. Yes, it does. Thank Chairman. you, Chairman Phillips. Do we have any other questions? Ms. Erickson, you're recognized. Um, just to kind of uh, go along or give a little direction um, uh, from Mr. Phillips, the, um, the retiree um, Medicare Advantage uh, supplement or the insurance that is offered to a county employee after retirement is a benefit and and really no benefits are actually guaranteed they can be taken away at any given time however um, in the case of my employees they are working at a lesser paid job uh, doing the same thing that somebody out in general public can but my guys have not really a guarantee, but a guarantee that there is um, some benefits after retirement if they've been here long enough. This, these plans, um, several years ago, 2009, 10-ish, we draw the line in the sand. You hired after this date, you only get this benefit, but after this date, you don't even get that. So this is not even a full benefit offer to some of our current uh, employees and they hired on knowing that at the time so yes at any given time the uh, retiree benefit of insurance provided for them can go away just like technically i guess y'all could take the insurance away from the employees and figure out something different but the reason why we have it and offer it is it is a benefit to the retirees that the employees that have been here forever and the ones that are before that have worked forever to be on these plans. So that's that's why the plan is offered and I think it's a good offer because honestly and truthfully, I think my department's not the only one that if you, know, you take uh, Mr. Mike right here, probably doing what he does in private would make a lot more money but he has the guarantee that he's got an office to come to. There are benefits because he has insurance and and things like that. So the retiree insurance, whether it's the Medicare Advantage or for the pre-65s, the the same insurance, um, it's, it's just a benefit to be able to keep the workers that we have and the quality workers that we have and offer them some hope at the end of the, um, their time, but like I said, even the ones hired now, some of them just hired knows there's nothing for them because we ultimately draw the line in the sand. Mr. Phillips, my, my question was not to take anything away. I'm just trying to get a better clarification as to what the advantage is for a retiree to accept our advantage plan than just going out on their own and doing it. Why, why are we offering it if they have it available to them? And if it's a benefit and co- more cost effective to them, that's the answer that I'm looking for, okay? Thank you, Mr. Phillips. I think the chair understood that, so thank you for that clarification. Any other questions or comments? 
Seeing none, we'll move to item eight, other business. Is there any other business the committee wishes to bring? Uh, Mr. Tudovini, you're recognized. Did you raise your hand? I saw the hand go up, so put your hands in your pockets or you'll be like Chairman McAdoo over who's also got his hand up. <laughs> uh, I want to remind the committee we do not have a June meeting, so our next meeting is July 25th, 2024, and if there is no objection, we stand adjourned.